He's on the verge of one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of all time. Fifty years ago, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in these caves. One of them, the mysterious Copper Scroll, speaks of buried treasure. How's it going, guys? It's back-breaking work with little reward for Vendel's dedicated crew. They all pay to be on the dig. Vendel says they're getting close. A cave entrance at the third level of the bedding rock. Inside that cave on the west side is the Ark of the Covenant and Tabernacle. The Ark of the Covenant has been missing since Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the first Jewish temple two and a half thousand years ago. In Jerusalem's Tower of David Museum, representations of the temple still draw an admiring crowd. Looking for the Ark might seem popular, even commendable, but Vendel Jones has his critics. People think that our job as biblical archaeologists is to go out and try to prove the Bible or disprove the Bible. You couldn't be further from the truth. Our job is to try to understand past historical processes. That's it. In this city of competing national and religious beliefs, the Ark is a potent symbol. The right-wing Jewish zealots, its discovery could fuel calls for the temple's reconstruction, which might be fine, but for the presence on the very same spot of Islam's third holiest shrine. Vendel Jones has been digging in this inhospitable place for more than a decade. All he's found so far is some oil that may or may not have been used in the ancient Jewish temple in Jerusalem, and 600 kilos of a reddish substance that he describes as incense and others say is dirt. But Vendel Jones is undaunted. Somewhere in this rock, he believes, lies a much greater prize. Paul Adams, BBC News, in the Jordan Valley. It's 400 years since wild beaver were last seen in British rivers. Now the Worldwide Fund for Nature is backing calls for the European beaver to be reintroduced in Scotland. There are concerns over possible effects on fish stocks and woodland, but environmentalists say the animal has been misunderstood and can actually benefit rivers. The government agency Scottish Natural Heritage began a consultation on the idea of bringing back the beaver earlier this year. Environmentalists who've helped reintroduce them elsewhere in Europe argue they'd enhance Scottish river habitats. They say the concerns of salmon fishermen about the scheme are unfounded. Unlike its American cousin, it doesn't damage rivers by building large dams and will not deplete fish stocks because it's completely vegetarian. Beavers build these small dams which slow the water down. Vegetation which has died gets trapped behind the dams in this slow water and that allows insects to feed on the vegetation. Fish can then feed on these insects and as a result there's more food, the fish grow more quickly and the whole system benefits. Around a dozen European countries have already brought back the beaver, and in Norway they've proved to be a big tourist attraction. There's still a long way to go before Scottish Natural Heritage can get government approval for its scheme, but it is now a real possibility. The idea of reintroducing extinct species is not a new one. There's been a long-running debate about whether wolves could be brought back to the Scottish Highlands. The unanswered question is whether a growing population of wild beavers could have an unforeseen impact on the environment. James Shaw, BBC News.